the real side experiences are always demonstrating something for us, revealing more of the endless expressions of being and positions of life throughout the dimensions, life levels of the simulator and indeed other creational simulators also, for there is more than just this simulator we happen to be in here, and each simulator will have its own expression, its unique flavour, stemming from the individuals that reside within it. For created simulators are as they are in accordance with the consciousness that formulates their construction. And the simulators then will reflect the consciousness as every individual makes their cause and effect decisions and choices. Consequently, we can have simulators in varying states of being, from what we would call golden epochs to iron ones, according to the agreement that has a simulator reflecting the collective overall consciousness, consciousness ranging from the extremely restricted to the opposite and more free-flowing. A real guide then may well create something to demonstrate to us on the real side, another viewpoint to consider, for the personal self to become ever more aware of the whole of life, and every experience as another comparison to recognise the true reality of the ears, as the all ears is an invisible reality, and recognition of it can only be established by the awareness of everything it isn't, which is everything and every experience on the physical and the real side in creation. Or equally, a real guide need simply take us to a place in creation where the viewpoint they wish us to see can be experienced, as throughout all of the created simulators it is conceivable that there is little that hasn't been at one point or other created, decided, and agreed upon, that the guides can then utilise for our becoming 
more aware viewpoints and comparisons to recognize the ears by on this real side experience then I would find myself in what I can only describe as a theme park of some description in who knows what creational simulator or dimension. It reminded me a little of Westworld, where the robots had been created in a Wild West setting for the paying guests to interact with in whatever form of interaction took the guests fancy only in this case i would call this theme park werewolf world because instead of robots there were werewolves. They were the variety that walk on two legs, bipedal, instead of the four-legged type, as both versions have been depicted in the movies. And yes, Werewolves are very real. Dwayne has recounted in his new book Adventures how they seem to dwell in the lower astral amongst all the other assorted entities, vampires, reptilians, and individuals who through their cause and effect decisions and choices have found themselves in this most forbidding place of creation. And with the body forms you would find yourself inhabiting should your physical life choices be of an extremely base, abrasive to others, and generally antisocial nature? The body type you assume each lifetime around is a cause and effect consequence of your choices and decisions and the nature of the ideas that you agree with that others have created. A reptilian then would be construed as an awareness backstep from a human. The prehistoric lizard forms in keeping with awareness that is not evolving, awareness that is stagnating, and the world controllers will generally be in such reptilian forms, or will be assuming such forms in future lifetimes, if they have just begun their downward spiral into the deciding of the controlling of others and getting agreement to their controlling skullduggery, 
such creatures as werewolves are along similar lines. Individuals assuming very animalistic forms as a reflection of their indulgences, their satiating of their carnal desires in very abrasive ways, and their imposition on others. And an individual can continue to regress through body forms if they decide not to make better life choices that make sense in regards to the whole of life and their real awareness. Indeed, they can transition from human to reptilian or werewolf and even further into a complete animal forms. This theme park certainly wasn't in the lower astral. I had the sense that the werewolves here had been captured and placed in this park and it was a park or resort built on some planet or other for the entertainment of the inhabitants. The participants, those electing to enter the park, looked very human to me. So perhaps a dimensional version of Earth and its humans, or another human-looking species in some far-flung corner of wherever, just like in Westworld, the human guests could do whatever they decided with the werewolves. For most, this would take the form of hunting these creatures. It was considered great sport by the majority of these humans to shoot and slay them. The werewolves seemed somewhat disorientated, not fully conscious, as though drugged to a degree, and this certainly made them less aggressive, and thus wouldn't be quite so dangerous for the humans, for unlike in Westworld, where the idea was how the robots could not harm the guests, these werewolves could, and would indeed do so, if given the chance despite their ferocity and capability for being able to do so seemingly diminished. The werewolves tended to mingle in bewildered groups. Occasionally, one would stray from a group wandering absently off on its own, and this was usually the werewolves that were killed, as dispatching an isolated individual 
was less risky than engaging a group. Scattered throughout the open country area that the werewolves shambled about in were reinforced buildings that served as a sanctitude and a places of assured safety. Humans could retreat and hide in these buildings if they had the need to do so, and they were sturdy to the extent that no werewolf could enter or break in. I watched as individual humans hunted the werewolves. Also, there were military human groups operating and wearing the sort of outfits you'd expect with such. The military units were using the werewolves to practice their drills with, using the beasts as substitute practice enemy targets to better their rifle aimers and such. It was a rather pitiful sight to behold. Some of the humans were even degrading the werewolves. Some were using them for all kinds of sordid activities without going into details. Judging by what I saw with some of the human's choice of activity, I'm uncertain which were the actual monsters here.